Hello, and in today's Mac programming tutorial, we're going to have a look at something that I think is really cool. That's how we can use a native Apple framework called AV Foundation and the bunch of APIs that it provides to be, to be able to sh uh, deal, deal with media in our app now. All, all we're going to show is a simple introduction to it. That's how we can, show, we can allow a user to select one of the, the cameras that they have connected to their Mac and show a preview from that camera on... Um, in in our app now think of the photo booth application that that does this all the time so we're going to use that as an example to show an introduction to AV Foundation because it will allow us to talk about some of the basic concepts but AV Foundation is really an advanced framework we can deal with media playback we can deal with uh, media capture we can deal with media preview as we're doing here and we can even deal with editing of media pictures, video, audio, everything you can think of. Anyway, in this video, we're just gonna do that simple thing, show how to show a preview of our camera in our app, and more importantly, we're gonna allow the user to select um, which camera they wanna use. So, without further ado, let's talk about AV Foundation. Whenever we use an AV Foundation, there are several concepts we're gonna need to know about, because when you think about it, Capture and video, uh, apart from the simplest capture, it's quite a complicated concept. The, the system has to process each frame of video, even just to show it in a preview. And AV Foundation kind of opens your eyes to how, how complex that is. So, what do we need? Well, we need a session to, um, uh, and the class is a AV session, and the session is going to coordinate our, our, um, uh, capture so what what devices are we capturing from well, where's that capture going uh, um, is it output into a file is it output into a preview do, do we want to intercept the capture before we start it how do we stop the capture these are all things that are controlled by the AV foundation session object we then have a device which is a is a class that you use a, static methods on because devices don't typically change a user has a certain number of physical devices on their system so we access those devices that are already pre-created to us by apple and um, so we have av capture session av capture device we also have av 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 capture input which is a tr translation of of that device into a format that we, that we create to add into our session so it's kind of our our version of that default device we can then have outputs to either output to a file out, output to the screen or in our case output to a preview so that's a simple explanation of AV foundation let's let's dive into the app um, for the first time where I'm actually gonna show um, the, the finished app and kind of just walk through the code because writing the code would take too long and I'm not convinced there'd be much more to be gained from it so um, but this however is my app that I've written so for very simple app when it launches we've got a preview of me and um, uh, just down, down below there you can uh, and I'm using the app to show this particular preview you can see that we've got a list of um, the cameras that are available so let's look at and that's built dynamically every time so let's let's look at how we build this now the the if I open up Xcode here all my application is done in this main view controller.swift file that's we do that because just to have somewhere to harness that up now our our preview needs to be held in a view but this isn't the view controller for that preview view, this is just a generic view controller. If we look in our um, window, we see that this is just a custom view. It doesn't have a subclass because we we um, we don't need to draw anything in the view. We need to interact with the views layer, which which um, is where we add the preview and um, uh, the view already has a layer, so we don't actually need to create a custom view. We we just need to add a placeholder for a generic view that we can then get a hold of. Um, so anyway, let's go looking through the code. Uh, 
First thing you do is set up our internal AV. Actually, very first thing we do is import AV Foundation. That's that's important for this entire framework to work. But the, then we set up our internal API. What things are, are we going to need to get constant access to in our in in to view our our cameras? Well, there's this available cameras pop up button which is um, connected to the drop down menu we saw, which contains all the cameras because. We, we need to find out what cameras are available but, but then we need to be able to get access to that to um, attach attach what cameras are available t to that um, we've also got got an output to our to our view which is just that blank view so that then we well, when we when we've created the preview we can tell it to display the preview in that view um, we've then got some variables that are Private because they're only relevant for this class, um, but we 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 do need them. Um, first is our available cameras, which, like I said, you just use a, a class method of that AV capture device class to return whatever devices are, are are suitable for video that are currently available. Now that's going to be important later when we uh, the fact. That this returns an array and that's going to be important later when we're cycling through the array to see what um, what which devices we can add we then um, have a var for our camera session which like I say we're always going to need so we initialize it here and again it's a it's a kind of um, a property of this class so that we can access it anywhere within this class because we're going to be constantly updating the session so uh, next we have and I've broken this out into separate functions because there's two different things one is we want to deal with that list and the, the other is we want to actually display the preview so for the um, add device to list we've, we've actually done exactly the same example in the previous video we get um, we go through each of the available devices which are in that available devices array that we we just talked about, and for each of those devices, we add an item to the to the pop-up button with uh, that device's name as the item text. Um, so that's how we create that drop-down. Very simple. Um, in terms of the AV Foundation specific stuff, for, for first of all, we need to create that device. Well, how do we know what device the user selected? Well, we we go we go through that list of available cameras that we already got and we see uh, um if if the if the device that we're currently lo looking at is is the one that's been selected by the user if, if it is we set it as this device variable and why why have we set that device variable well it's because we can then grab hold of it and we say Okay, that's the device we want to add. Where do we do that? Well, we do that here in this in this do block, and we 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 say to the camera session we want to add an input of an AV capture device based on the the input that we selected from that device. And this this method throws. That's why it's might would try. So it's possible that it might throw an error. So if it throws an error, we capture the error as error and then pr just print the localized localized description of the error. If if this do block executes, we can assume that that error hasn't been thrown. So um, we we then set up a preview, which is the third component that I talked about. We say we say we want to set preview equal to an AV capture video preview layer. And it's going to say, what do you want to preview? Well, we want to preview whatever content is in the camera session object. Um, I'm then setting the the uh, the, re the resolution of this preview, basically the aspect ratio, and this this is an enumeration where we can set several different options. But this is this is basically saying fill fill whatever whatever container you're in, but maintain the aspect ratio. So we. We then say that the the layer of that of that generic view that we created and referenced earlier is a preview layer. Um, 
next preset the the, the preset of the of the video so that's best. there are several options you can set there I've got this VDA, VDA resolution but but um you can set it as whatever you want uh, uh, once we've set all that up I then tell the session to start running which will um, start start this preview being shown now where do I fire all this stuff because um these were custom functions that I created to break this stuff apart so where do we um where do we fire it off well maybe this isn't the best place but we we fire it in view did load so so first we need to add the devices to the list um so that a user has an opportunity to, 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 to select select one and then after that we pref prepare all our session objects and start the video one thing I wanted to go into that I didn't mention before is that this select selected device that I'm using down here to set what device I want to add to the session why have I made that optional well um, all all uh, an implicitly unwrapped optional or all variables that you want to set have to have a value when you first set them that's how classes work so I'm going to say that this variable is optional because I don't know what um, I don't know what my selected device is going to be before the user has selected one so um, I, I can't set it at that point now I could replace this with a question mark but then I'd have to constantly say if if this is not nil then you can go ahead and do this else for an error but I know that for this app to be of any use what what device we're using ha, has to have been set so I can say that it's an implicitly unwrapped optional and what that means is okay I'm guaranteeing that w w when I whenever I want to use this um, whenever I want to use this, I'll, I'll, al I'll already have set it, and, and we we know that we know that it's already set because we we run we run the function to add, add the devices before before we then try and actually use that device to add, to add it to the session. So we know that um, well, the the uh, it's going to have a value by the time we set it. It's just not got. A, it's just not got a value when we first started. Now, uh, um, if if this variable wasn't set, if if for some reason the user didn't have a camera on their device, this this wouldn't be set because that this this array would be nil. So there the, there wouldn't be any, there wouldn't be anything to add to the session. Then then this application would would throw an error. That's bad and obviously a, a bad user experience. You do, you don't want to have a piece of software that for for his errors all the time. In a in a real real world application, you you want to protect against that. Write some kind of nice error error message, but because because this is a demo, we we know that's not going to happen. And we I'm just trying to give a simple explanation of this here. So I just wanted to discuss that briefly. And anyway, that was a, a simple example of how how to use Apple's AV found foundation framework to interact with camera previews in your custom application that that might have seemed complicated but this is quite a high high level abstracted away framework where you don't have to interact with the individual video frames and you can nicely share a preview so anyway hope that hope that was helpful